This is the Ad O Bank from the 1940s. It's a metal piggy bank that you put coins in and it adds the total as you go. This one came from the Central National Bank and Trust Company of Middletown. It has a slot down here where you put in your coins and a track with a sliding knob. On the bottom, there's a door you can open to get that cash along with some fine print and the name of the machine. It has a keyhole up here for resetting it back to zero and a display here which will register amounts up to $19.95. I don't know exactly when this thing was made. On the bottom, there's some fine print that says it was patented in 1943, so 1940s or later seems reasonable. It has the seal of the FDIC on there, which is an American government program that protects people's money from bank failures. It says you're insured up to $5,000. That means if somehow your bank loses all your money, the government will pay you back up to $5,000. That's good old-fashioned American capitalism socialism. Anyway, this amount, $5,000, has been changing over time. Right now, the FDIC insurance amount is $250,000. It was set at 5000 from 1935 to 1950, so I'm going to guess this thing was made sometime in the 1940s. It's pretty simple to use. you got this slidey thing over here. You start it up here where it says start, and then down here it says stop coin. So right now the register says zero, and you put your coin in and slide it all the way down to stop coin. Put in a quarter, that's 25 cents. Okay, it works. In case you can't figure all that out yourself, you got instructions on the bottom. Place lever at extreme, extreme right, insert coin, and pull lever to extreme, extreme left. I always love it when they put instructions right on the machine. Nobody can actually keep track of the original instructions on paper. It also says the thing can only register nickels, dimes, and quarters. That is, coins for 5, 10, or 25 cents. This way the counting register only needs to handle amounts that are multiples of 5. If they wanted to handle pennies also, then they'd need 20 times more positions on the display, which means either the machine would be much bigger or the numbers would be much smaller. All right, just to demonstrate, how about I put in coins for the amount of money I typically make on YouTube each day? All right. I really like the physical action of this thing. The lever makes this really satisfying clicky sound as you slide it. And then you hear a satisfying clank when your coin falls down and hits the back of the machine. You can see some stuff in there if you look inside the door, but the main mechanism is still hidden. There isn't really any way to get in there, but you can see the mechanism pretty well in the patent documents, and it explains exactly how it works. Basically, you got three parts. In the middle, there's this plate with three grooves in it. This plate doesn't move. And then there's this arm here with a little hook on the end. It's on a spring so it can get pushed in and out by the coin. And it's also directly attached to the lever that you turn with your finger. And when you turn it, the little hook on the arm drags across the yellow plate. And behind the yellow plate is another plate with slots cut into it. This one is free to spin, but there's usually nothing turning it. It's also attached directly to the digits readout. Now watch what happens when you stick the coin in there and rotate the lever. See, the spring-loaded arm is dragging along the yellow plate, and the size of the coin lines it up just right so it'll snap into one of the three grooves. Then the hook will engage the blue wheel, which turns the answer dial. The grooves are only so long, and it'll only turn the blue dial until the arm pops back up again, and the lengths of those grooves are perfectly tuned to dial in the correct amount. Oh, did you see that animation? This is some quality antiviral video content. The little door on the back has a latch with a keyhole. Now, when I first saw this, I assumed it was some kind of dummy lock that you could just open with a flat screwdriver. But no, this thing uses a very strangely shaped key, and I don't have it. I'm just lucky the door was open when I got this thing. If someone ever closes it, I'll never be able to open it up again. The key has two ends on it. One end opens the door, and the other end you stick into the front here and turn to reset the dials to zero. Without the key, my only way to reset it is to actually feed in coins to make it roll over exactly to zero. Easy come, easy go. Most of these old things were stamped with the name of some local bank on them. And after the slow death of mom and pop American banking, almost none of these banks exist anymore. 
It's pretty easy to get an ad o bank for cheap on eBay, and they all look different. You could easily get yourself an ad o bank, but it'd probably be impossible if you wanted this particular one from the Central National Bank and Trust Company of Middletown. This is a weird situation. These things are easy to find, not really rare at all. But each individual one, that's a different story. The one in my hand here may very well be the only one of its kind. It's like people, right? There's billions of us, and at the most fundamental level, we're all the same. Human lives on the large scale can seem interchangeable and cheap. And during some kind of crisis, say we got a thousand people dying each day from some pandemic, that's alarming, but we feel it even more when it's an individual. Someone we love. Someone who loves us. Human beings are abundant on this great earth, and altogether we look kind of like a mess. But when we look at the individuals... There's a transcendent beauty. There's sacred value in every living person. Even the most ordinary among us carries a hidden promise, a seed of greatness. And could it be that the ad o bank is the same way? There's so many of these old things, but when you hold one in your hand, could it be that each one is a riddle, a mystery, a treasure waiting to be discovered? Probably not. Mm -hmm.